I'm Gary. This is Austin. And we are Midwest Mics coming back at you right here on our YouTube channel and anywhere you get your streaming audio. Uh, Spotify. Whatever's going on. Spotify, yes. iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. Got them. Wow. All right, good. Apple Midwest Podcast. Mics. It's all under Midwest Mics, M-I-D-W-E-S-T-M-I-C-S. We are all the way in, uh, starting with the uh, NFL free agency, but some NFL news on... We mean you, I would say we enjoy uh, gambling on sports games. Yes. There'll be times where uh, I'll, I'll be like watching a game and I'm like, oh man, uh, and they're like, Austin, how much money do you have on this game? I'm like, a dollar. And they're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, no, I just like... Part of the thing about betting on sports is just being right. Yes. And being competitive. So I will bet a dollar on a game just so I have something in the game. And then I want to be like, I was right. I was right about this game. Now I'll bet more on some other games and stuff too. But, uh, and the game we have tonight is me and him both are on Dallas minus one and a half. You'll know by the time you watch this if we hit that or not. We'll see. Yeah. But, anyways, Calvin Ridley. Yes, Calvin Ridley today, breaking news uh, out of the NFL, uh, was caught gambling on NFL games uh, after he had left the Falcons uh, due to his mental health condition and then placed some five and eight team parlays uh, that included the Falcons to win, which that's how you know he was crazy because the Falcons weren't beating anybody. Uh, maybe he was out of the sprit. But uh, anyway, uh, as an NFL player or or a professional player in any league, you cannot bet on the games. I mean, it's Pete Rose is, is probably the prime example. Uh, you know, got caught, got banned from baseball. Whether you agree, disagree, whatever. Disagree. With that. Um, well, no, I dis- I, I think he was wrong. Uh, should be Hall of Famer, though. Yes, he, he should be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, he's what? He's got the hitting, like the best hitter in Major League Baseball, and he still holds some hitting Yeah, record. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, if, yeah. But uh, anyway, so the NFL suspends him for the entire season next year uh, over that. And then what did, what did Calvin Ridley say? He don't have a gambling problem. Yeah. Said he bet. He really don't. Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred bucks. He's a millionaire. Fifteen hundred dollars. That's like me and you going, and we're spending a, a, a hundred. Yeah. In a night. Sure. But the thing about I mean the thing about it is this too. And I, and I and correct me if I'm wrong. He could have bet on other sports and been fine. As far as I know, yes. Uh, you just can't bet within your own league. So if he would have had the itch, he should have bet on hockey or NBA. NBA. He should have bet on the NBA. He should have bet NBA. He should have bet hockey. Because it was NASA. November, December time. NBA. NBA's going on. They have a lot. They have a lot. A ton of games going on. So he could have done his parlays. He could have done whatever. If he if he just, if he just said, I want to gamble. But he you know he knows NFL, so he did it. Uh, you had a good. You had a good point. Uh, you should have had one of his buddies place the bets. Yeah, I mean that, that was the first thing that came to my mind is like you know you're an NFL player, you see them in the in, in you know all the time these videos right where they go out to the club. They're not by themselves. They're in a group of ten, fifteen, twenty people when they go out. Tell me he couldn't have just gave that money to a friend and said, "Hey man, I want you to go place these parlays for me." Or you he you got to know that he knows. Some private bookie, yeah, that would have taken the action because that's what they do. They take action on anything, and he could have he could have done it. I mean, Michael Jordan had a had a bookie, and yeah. he bet on also. I don't know if he bet NBA. It hasn't ever came out that he did. So what do you what do you? Uh, I mean, I I I, I bet he had bets like with I guys he, he was playing against I or bet, playing with. Like hey. I bet you I'm gonna double up on your points tonight. Yeah, or also I also I, I Tony I would, Kukoc. If it came out later that like Jordan bet on games, I guarantee you he bet big on the Bulls every single oh, yeah. night. Like he'd be like, yeah, "I'm winning." Yeah, and bet on it. And then that, during the 72 games win season, he maybe he made a lot of money. Yeah. So, but so we are definitely not condemning him for gambling on sports. I'm not because we love it. And and he wasn't playing. Yeah. 
We we love it. But so it wasn't like he was in there. He couldn't throw the game or nothing. As a member of a professional sports team, you can't bet on professional football. Hopefully, a lot of guys learned the lesson. And um, I think that's why the penalty is so harsh. Man, it's har- uh, it's harsher than like. I mean, it's harsher. It's than, harsher than some domestic abusers. I saw uh, it was harsher than Kareem Hunt kicking that lady. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so I think I think that's part of a message thing that Goodell wants to send. Like, hey, we're we're not going to have this. Yeah, and and really, yeah, think about big picture. They want to make sure the integrity of the game. Um, is staying intact, and so that's a big thing too. Whether or not he should have been suspended for a whole season, yeah, I mean they they got to send a message. And and the crazy thing, crazy thing also is now the NFL is partners with all these you know DraftKings, FanDuel, every commercial Caesars, uh, Caesars, yeah, well, Bet, Bet, Bet MGM, Bet MGM, like you're seeing commercials for them in between. Like in in all every commercial set, there's huge, at least one, right? Huge business. So I mean, the Mannings are endorsing uh, Caesars. So it's oh, like, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's like, <laughs> oh man. So sports gambling is a thing, but if you're a member of a team, you can't bet on your sport, which I'm totally fine with. Yeah, sports gambling can't do it. Sports gambling is just keep getting bigger and bigger, and as it does, these guys gotta gotta. It's really fun, and it's awesome, and it's really fun to get involved, even if you just want to have a good time um, and bet some crazy props and just have a fun time watching a game. It makes games – it literally makes games you do not even care about Yeah, really meaningful. I mean, we've, we've, been, we've been places where, like, there's just a game on TV, and we'll look it up and be like, what's the live line? And then we'll throw a dollar or two or three on it. Hey, and the last two I think were 2-0, and oh, right? I think so. Lakers, the Lakers, Bears, one, yeah, Bears. I think, yeah, Bears. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> way back to football. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. So, uh, totally cool with gambling. Just you know, you can't can't if you're an NFL player, you can't bet on the NFL. Yeah. So, Calvin Ridley, it's all right. Oh, I'm, like I said, not condemning the gambling, but not on the NFL, my dude. NBA, yep. go NBA or NHL or NASCAR or something else. Yeah, get golf. Get, get your itch. Go throw some dice. Throw dice. Uh, bet on. I mean, there's literally you could bet on any like yeah. anything. Anything else? Rom, you know, Romanian so. uh, hockey. I don't know. Yeah. Um, bit of Chiefs news. Franchise tag has been announced. Orlando and Brown franchise tag. I don't know the number exactly on what he gets paid because I think it's really just a stepping stone. To lock him in and work out a long term deal, uh, so I think really, I really think that's what the plan is. Worst, so worst case scenario, he still gets uh, he gets the guaranteed money uh, mm-hmm. for the deal. Uh, I, I I saw some guy. I, I've heard a little bit of chatter, mostly positive, but a little negative about spending this much money on the line. And and then I, a six ten shout out six ten radio today. They actually were putting stats out like, okay, if you guys want to cry about how much money we're spending on our O line. Let's actually check and see who spends the least amount of money on their O-line. Bengals. It was Bengals, and Burrow gets killed. And it's like Pittsburgh and some other t- – and then like literally the bottom – like it's like the bottom 10. Besides uh, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, they're bad teams. Yeah. So, so you, probably like a Detroit. you got to spend money on the O-line. Miami. Chiefs, Chiefs are actually in the middle. So they're, they're in the middle. I think they uh, were 15 or 16th. Uh, something like that. Really, not a lot of money because there was a couple draft picks out there, and then some uh, reserves and stuff. Um, Kyle Long and some guys that were just making, uh, you know, the minimum. But uh, it's one of those things where that I, I like O line. I want to spend money on the O line. I don't think we have to have the best O line for Patrick to succeed. I think we have to have a pretty good one. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know what? Let's secure the left tackle. Our center's cheap. Uh, we have a guard that's cheap. We're good. Like we're we're cool. I mean, uh, I trust Brett Veach. I think he did a really nice job revamping the O line this last off season. After everyone was like, "Yo, uh, killed in the Super Bowl because your O line was bad." Oh, okay, revamp. And so it's all good. So I, I really like the move uh, for the Chiefs. The other kind of free agency news is Tyron Matthews going to test free agency. Uh, there's scenarios where he does come back. And uh, I saw some comparisons of like, what do you pay? Because I think he's twenty. I think he's twenty nine or he's thirty. 
He, he's right around 30, yeah. Or he's turning 30. I think so, he'll be 30 by the time next season starts. So the highest paid safety in the league that's like above 30 is, I think it's McCourty. And he's getting, a low, I think it's 11 and a half. There's a guy, oh no, there's a guy getting 13. Anyways, that's like literally the highest. So I think his, I don't think he sets like the safety market with his age. I think he thinks he could, is going to test the market and maybe get like a 14 or 15. If he doesn't, and and we could get him back for a ten, I'm all in. I know a lot of guys act like he doesn't tackle or something, but I, come yeah. on. I mean, I'm sure that the Chiefs probably made him an offer, probably around eight, eight and a half, and you know, and I'm just spitballing that number. But he didn't like it for whatever reason. He goes, "Well, let me see what I can get." So the Chiefs are like, "I don't blame him." Oh, okay. I mean, I don't I mean, blame him. Yeah, it's not, and and it's not ruled out that he still won't sign with the Chiefs. It's totally business. Like, all he's going to do is he's going to say, hey, I'm a free agent, so these teams will entertain him, you know, bring him to town, say, hey, here's our offer. Then he'll get all his offers, weigh in, talk to his agent, his family, all those things, and figure out where he wants to go. The same guys that are trashing uh, Matthew's play this year are the same guys that are trashing uh, Mahomes like for his second half against Cincinnati. Like... That's not the long term picture, and I know you guys want to armchair quarterback Tyron Matthew and say he doesn't tackle and stuff. I don't think it's true. Yeah, uh, player uh, PFF came out and basically said that after the first three or four weeks, uh, nobody th- uh, Matthew had a pick six in the Baltimore game, and then he had some other nice plays. Literally, defenses didn't even throw to his side anymore. Not necess- I mean, and out on the flip side, I would say not necessarily because he's great. I think he is. I think he is great or good, really good. Uh, but they were picking on our other guys mm-hmm. because obviously he was he was not the weak link. I mean, yeah. everybody knows. Anytime a guy was getting burned last year, it was Sorensen because some reason he was dropped back into coverage, uh, like deep coverage. You know, whether he was manned up on a guy that hit a you know fly route or whatever, and just getting he would get killed. And so a lot of times it wasn't Matthew. A lot of times you would see Matthew be like, like you throw hands up, like, what the yeah. What are you doing? So if the Chiefs can get him for 10, like an average 10 a year or whatever, mm-hmm. I'm 100% in, like a three, like a four year 40, uh, makes sense to me. Um, I would like that. So we'll see. Other than that, uh, the other kind of free agency news with the Chiefs is maybe, maybe kind of uh, wanting to get a wide receiver too. If they don't, it's not the end of the world. They'll still be a top five offense. We were kind of talking about that before mm-hmm. the show. Worst case scenario, we're still top five, um, and so it's it's all right, and 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 I, you know, we'll be fine. So uh, I'll flip it on on your team. Cowboys looking like they're going to franchise tight end. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like they're going to franchise Blake Jarwin. Is what I'm reading. How do you uh, feel about that? I'm actually okay with it because you know that that's. I mean, we, I don't want him to get away, and, and I think it'll kind of be a step to maybe work out that long-term deal and see if they can get that done in the off season, but keep him from getting out of there because he definitely was was a piece to our offense, uh, you know. So I, I'm excited. He he had some big catches and some big moments uh, in games. Not not a ton of catches, but I mean, key kind of key key catches. So I think he can. Not that he's Jason Witten, but I think that's kind of the role they want him to fill. And kind of hang on to him, too. He'll get more targets with Amari being gone. Yeah, that's the um, next thing I was going to talk about. Uh, you know, Amari Cooper possibly uh, going to be released by Dallas. At least that's what the reports say. Well, I thought Amari was already released. No, they have not released him yet. Okay. Uh, it, it would be at the start of the new league year. What day is that? I think it's after the – f- it- Maybe tomorrow at 4 when the franchise – Tag oh, deadline is, okay, or maybe, okay. I don't know. So sometime. it is. It, I mean, it's this month. It, for it's sure. coming up. Yeah, it's in okay. March. Uh, but uh, but yeah, they're saying that Dallas may release Amari Cooper. You know, I, I'm a, I'm back and forth on this deal. The money that they're going to have to pay him, like twenty million, I think is the number. That's way too high for what production he got last year. Right. Um, now, if, if they can restructure his deal somehow, and this happens all the time in the NFL, if he wants to take a pay cut and, and stay in Dallas, I'm all for it. Like, I, I'm not saying, hey, get this bum out of here, but you can't pay him $20 million. So, 
caught him take the cap hit. Uh, the thing that that is bothering me, the reports I'm seeing, is that Demarcus Lawrence may be a cap casualty. Also, that is a, a piece to that defense that I think would really hurt losing him. And he, he he'll definitely try to get big time market value. I, yes. I would think. And I'm not, you know I'm not knocking the Cowboys. I'm saying. I think what he's what he would be looking for as far as pay. I don't know if they're in the cap situation, or I'm, I don't know if they'd want to spend that cap money to do that. Mm-hmm. What will happen for the Cowboys is too is I think I think Zeke is eating up a pretty he a, is a little not like crazy, but he's eating up a decent chunk. And I would, if I was a Cowboys fan, look for them to cut him next year. Yes, because the we, cap we, number's too high to cut him this year. One uh, there was a night we were talking football and we looked up like. This is kind of dorky stuff, but like we looked up like kind of cap stuff, and it's basically like to cut Zeke this year really doesn't help you at all. No, uh, but next year it does. Yeah, and if I, I was, I'm not saying Zeke sucks or nothing like that. I'm saying his cap number is too big for again his production. But and what you can do it, it really to get the production, that, the same production is that you you cut him and then you draft a, a running back or you go get a, a cheap. A cheaper number two, like you had with Darren McFadden a, a, few, a couple years mm-hmm. ago. Tony Pollard is there now. I Pollard, mean, and I think here's the deal: you, I feel like you can get he's young, pretty much the same production yeah. with Pollard, with a lot less cap hit. And in the NFL, the whole deal is: yeah, you want to pay your superstars, but other guys that are like fringe, like yeah, you always want to try to get you a little bit younger because those are cheaper, mm-hmm. and you, you know you want to keep that money put to your superstars, right? Yeah. So, like, to put it for the Chiefs, Chiefs guys, it, it would be like, okay, we're going to make sure we take care of Patrick and Hill and Kelsey. After that, then we're going to – because those are our three icons. Those are the three guys, um, you know, that you're going to take care of. You know, for the Super Bowl champs like the Rams, we're taking care of Aaron Donald. And mm-hmm. then – okay, and then we'll talk about other pieces around the defense. We're taking care of him first. And then we'll make sure uh, whatever. So they'll do whatever they got to do to have the money for him and then move on and, and, and do the other guys. So that's kind of how the, the cap – the cap is a little weird and kind of goofy yeah. how you can mess with it. And, and stuff. like Dak, Dak's contract that he just signed a year ago is going to get restructured already. This year it is? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I, I somebody – some one of the Cowboys reporters I follow – was saying that, that when they signed it, it was always meant to be restructured in year two. So, I mean, like you said, this cap stuff is really weird, how it, the, the terminology in the contract is written, like who gets paid what when, and, and you know, obviously Dak's going to restructure. I did see also, which I don't know if this is true, it's not confirmed, but uh, that Dallas went to Demarcus Lawrence to try to redo his deal and make it more cap and team friendly. And he said no. He said no. I heard that too. Um, and, then, and you know what? Again, and I, I don't I, know that for sure, but that's you know what? what? I and I am, I, I am. It's crazy. I, I love the Chiefs, but I am pro player. If a player thinks he can get more money, more power to you, dude. Like I, I am all about the player because you only can play for so long, and you don't know if yeah. that next hit's gonna. Which I, it. I totally get why Demarcus mm-hmm. Lawrence would say no because if Dallas cuts him. I mean, obviously, he's going to get that guaranteed money from them. Correct. That they owe him, but he'll get he'll get a big time payday on, yeah, on the market. Pay yeah, and somebody I, will probably overpay. I'm sure he probably. I'm sure he went to his agent. Agent said, "Hey, man, I, I've been feeling out these guys. Yeah, and and we think we can get some good offers. Hey, worst case scenario, we'll go. We'll, hey, you're familiar. You're you're friendly with Dallas. Like we'll go back to Dallas. But we're, like, we're gonna we're gonna go." See what we market. get, and I'm not. I'm telling you, I'm pro player, dude. Yeah. Like I'm not. I'm not like if Matthew leaves to go, and he does get end up getting 14 or 15 from Baltimore. Hey, good dude, for him, hey, right? Thank you for the championship. Hey, I'm a fan. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not necessarily going to be a Baltimore fan, but I'm a fan of him because he helped my city get a championship, and so I'm a fan. I'm a fan. That's like even when the, you know we like if we like go Frank Clark or whatever. Like I'm a fan. I'm a you help me get a ring, you go crazy in the playoffs. Like I'm a fan, so it's it's one of those things. I know some fans get a little bitter, like you know, you see some of the message boards, like all oh, these guys are trying to get more money, and I'm like, these players are so greedy, so greedy. No, they're not. No, I mean they they have. I think I think the average career in the NFL for a player is like six and a half, seven years. I think it's less than that, dude. 
I think it's like three. It might be three. So I'm like, hey, get your money while you can get it. Absolutely. You don't know if you're going to hurt tomorrow. So try to get that money today. And, and obviously, like, I mean, it's the same kind of on the coaching side. You know, the really, I feel like a, a contract in the NFL is kind of a starting point. But I feel like it, it really is just a piece of paper. I mean, it's saying, like, that you're going to keep keep doing what you're doing. But if, if the player really wants out or the team really wants out, there's yeah. ways around it. 100%. Uh, you know, obviously it may cost you a little more money, but, you know, I mean, to, look to at, these owners. Yeah, I mean, perfect example, look at the Rams. Yeah. They had a lot of – I mean, they really had a lot of money invested in Todd Gurley and got out of that. A lot, and, and I think Jared, Jared Goff had just kind of signed a deal. Got out of that to bring in Stafford. Mm-hmm. There's ways around it. And that's like when, when, when teams are in this constant rebuilding mode, I always kind of question the ownership a little yes. bit. Question the ownership. Looking at you, Detroit. I am looking at Detroit. I'm looking at Chicago. Miami. I'm looking at Miami, too. I like their I, – actually, I, really, I like their last head coach. I like the new one, too. I think he's sharp. And that that coaching tree is pretty pretty solid. Yeah. So, but the and, coach can't do it alone. No, nah, you got to have the Jimmies and the Joes, baby. Yep. And and I mean, you gotta you gotta have a GM who's who's all about your mission, and you gotta have an owner who's who's willing to get it done. So, I mean, it's it's like, yeah, I, I I'm all about the uh, I I don't mind rebuilding, but when it's time to push the chips in, the Rams are the I mean, the Rams are the example. Yeah, like yeah that's the, what they've done. Like basically, the last three years, they went for it every year and pulled the trigger on Stafford. I really feel like that's what I, I feel like that's what got him over the hump. Yeah, and I, I, really 100%. Do, yeah I really do think the Von Miller Von Miller deal was a big deal too. Yeah, get him over the hump. So I like you. You as, as a fan, you should want your team to be always pushing and not just you know not just say like, well, we're gonna draft and. You know, it's like no. You need to, you need you need to go get the free agent. You need to go. Not every free agent. Well, even Bill Belichick kind of changed his mo last year, and really pushed and went out and got a bunch of free agents, which he usually didn't do. Yeah, in New there was only a few times where they did that, and uh, I mean, success for New England is I don't know. It's tough, right? The year there's a year where you know the year they go to the Super Bowl against the Giants they were big in free agency they got Adelius Thomas and they got Randy Moss not free agency that's, that was a steel steel trade yeah Moss sixth round fifth yeah. round something like something that something like that because he wanted out of Oakland so bad <laughs> I mean what and the yes heck, they dude? were still Oakland at that point Dante Stallworth uh, some other guys you know they, they would go pick guys up and stuff I mean really uh, he would do like sneaky free agent moves mm-hmm. Rodney Harrison. Uh, from the Chargers, yeah. Um, Edel or not Edelman? Uh, no, who they get from? Uh, oh, Wes Welker. Yeah, Wes Miami. Welker. It's a little sneaky moves. So yeah. I mean, that's you always want your team to be pushing and grabbing guys and stuff like that. When you see these big money things, you should be happy that your team's actually going for it. Absolutely. I mean, on the bright side, like if you think the signing is like, oh, why do we pay him? I'm like, dude, at least my team is trying. Yeah, like they're, they're trying to do something. Paying somebody, so. I mean, I don't, you know, so I, I like I said, uh, all these Cowboys moves, it's all up in the air. If Amari restructures, I'm good with it. If they have to cut him, I'm good with that too. I think so. You, you, guys, can't, are deep, you guys are deep at receivers, so. Yeah, and Michael Fine. Gallup, they're they're confident after his ACL and everything, he'll be back healthy. Um, Dax, Dax good to go. Dax, good. O-line solid. Yep. Yeah, uh, I, I would like know. to get an upgrade um, at center for next year. A little draft pick there. Uh, awesome. Yeah. A little draft. Maybe draft a couple of them. Maybe draft Lindemann out of Iowa. <laughs> They're not getting him, but, I mean, he, he's the best center in the draft. Pretty good. That's, hey, that, I, hey, Cincinnati should trade all the way up for that dude. Yeah. I mean, he's freaking – he's going to be a stud. Yeah, I just give away everything for him. Uh, I, I would think so. So, uh, I want to ask you – I want to stick to football a little bit. Okay. And I, I thought about this, and I, I forgot to run it by you before the show. It's an interesting thing to me, and I might be reading into some stuff too much. So, MLB, right, mm-hmm. could not come to the agreement, and so some games are canceled, correct? Yes, the first two weeks. Does the USFL benefit from this? Absolutely, they be- they benefit. I thought about that because I was like, guys are going to be hungry for. We're going to be hungry for, for something. something, right? And you we- can get and you can get your NBA fix, and I enjoy the NBA. Mm-hmm. But if 
I think that the USFL will get a few more eyes on it because MLB is not doing nothing. Because college basketball will end kind of that first, I think yeah. the first Monday of April. And what's the kickoff date? I, for I believe USFL? the USFL. It is April. Yeah, I believe it's that next weekend. Perfect. Off the top of my head. You know what? The only thing I, I'm right now, I'm feeling like they're not doing great. I don't feel like their socials great. No, they, they had their schedule drop today, and I didn't even know about it. Do you follow them? I do. Okay, and, I, and I don't think I've jumped on it. I, I saw the, that they were having the schedule drop. Like I saw a tweet this morning about it, but then I didn't see anything else all day. And uh, the only and then I did look at the Philadelphia schedule um, because I'm friends with uh, Freedom Akeem Aladdin on Facebook. Who's our team? Is that our team? That, that's who I'm going to go with because Freedom, right. Freedom's oh, my yeah, guy. We, we talked about this. Yeah. Freedom's my guy. Uh, I coached him. Philly. Philly yeah. what? Uh, I don't remember. Philly. Who's the coach? Uh, I don't remember that either. I'm buying it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm slacking on my uh, I'm, USFL. I don't, know I don't know either. I'm going to watch it. I'm, I'll, I'll watch uh, it I'm too. Gonna, and I'll bet on Philadelphia. And like <laughs> I said, I'll cheer for them because <laughs> because Freedom's there. Uh, you know, I coached him when he was in middle school and high school. I was his sixth grade uh, science teacher. My oh. very, very first year teaching. Yeah. He, was in, he was in my sixth of- grade. Science class. Fresh out of SBU. So, yeah. Uh, upper Iowa. And Upper Iowa. Upper Iowa. The, uh, yeah, so I, I was kind of thinking about that too. Because uh, MLB to me is dropping the ball uh, big time. It's, I mean, I'm like, yeah. y- y'all can't work. No opening up. day. We got no, no, there's no signs that it's even close. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? You know what that means though? Right here. About two miles from my house at the Kansas City Monarchs. Hey, they're they're going. They're they're playing. They're coming off championship year. That's so, crazy. I like all their gear, dude. Yeah. All this stuff's awesome. So, so we'll we'll I be about that. But yeah, I'll USFL, probably be out a couple games. Uh then you, they get they need to get the social game up a little bit. Yeah. Cause I will say this about the XFL, uh it'd be two years ago now. Their social game was Awesome, mm-hmm. and so was uh, AA uh, American Alliance for AAF. AAF, yeah. Their social game was good too. I always knew when the games were on. I always knew what was going on. And, and, and their the, st- their logos were good. They had the starter jacket. I mean, I was like, I the social the social was really good on draft night for the USFL. But I feel like like I should have known the schedules were dropping today, like a week ago, right? Yes. Like, it should have been really hyped Who, and promoted. Hey, who's, like, the main owner? I have no idea. Fox, I think. The network. Yeah, because the games really, are going to be on Fox and FS1. One thing I thought about with this USFL, I'm, I'm really hoping that they are invested. What I mean by that is, oh, we didn't make money our first year. We're out. I don't want to see that. Yeah. like It's going to take three years. That's what I'm thinking. I always think like these, leagues, take three these seasons. leagues need to need to, they need to say, okay, we need to know worst case scenario, worst case scenario, like we're good on cash. Worst case scenario, yep. like no, no one, one shows up. No, no one, one watches. Shows up, nobody watches. What is our worst case scenario? Do we have the money to survive for three years? That's what I'm. That's and what I'm wanting. One thing that they are doing this year that I did see on social, which I think is a good idea for kind of a startup league, is all the games are going to be played in one location. I did not know that. So I think I think it's Birmingham, Alabama, uh, that they're all kind of they're putting the players up there. They're all staying. Their practices will be there. Oh. Um, no so, travel. Yeah. So no oh. travel expenses. Now, hopefully that's just like a year one, maybe a year two thing. Oh, no, so, that's actually not a bad idea because... Because of a good start. I mean, a startup league to save money initially. Let's yeah. just put everybody here. and We're going to play all our games over Birmingham. a six-week time. You know, boom. And I think, really, if it turns into a decent product, like, like Birmingham is going to be like, all right. And they're going to come out yeah. and tailgate. Okay. Maybe maybe we make a road trip. Mm. I kind of like that idea. Philly, wear our Philly stuff. Yeah. That's crazy. Get, you get wear the Philly boys. stuff. And it's not, but here's the deal. 
It ain't Eagles. No, it ain't Eagles. So it's totally different. That's and, the only and, problem I have with it. Is he, like, and he, you got a kid on that team, man. You, you yeah. taught that dude, man. So it's not like that. So USFL, that's pretty sweet. I, I mean, I think it's going to be a good deal. Uh, Get the boys. We'll jump in the Jeep. Just holler sh- 10 hours. Birmingham. 10 hours? Maybe. I don't know. Airbnb it up. Yeah. That'd be fun. Actually, that'd be really fun. Midwest Mike's on the road. Oh, man. Hey, All maybe right. we should start a GoFundMe. <laughs> we'll pay our own way, dude. Like, come on, man. We'll find an Airbnb no. and we'll yeah. go down there and do our thing and have a good time in Birmingham, Alabama. Maybe I don't know. And like, Birmingham. I bet, I bet, like the ticket would be like if they're gonna play four games bucks. on a Saturday. So you go, like, to you buy a ticket for all four games, maybe. And it's probably sixty bucks. It'd be like a pat, like a session pass for like a Big Twelve. Could you type go- championship day? Could you go in and out of the stadium? I don't know. That would be cool. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll do some research on this. I want to go. Hey, yeah. maybe we'll do live on location. A yeah. Live. Well, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey. Straight from Philly. Really? Nope. Kansas nope. City. Yeah. But, yeah, so that will be cool. I'm excited for USFL. I'm always excited for football. I yeah. really, really, really want these leagues to work. Me too. Uh, we've watched both the ones that came out. The AAF, man, I was loving it. I was loving it. Man, I was in on that. I was in on XFL too. Yeah, me too. And, and then, and then COVID, man, wrecked it. COVID wrecked him. But the problem is, McMahon was like, I think McMahon gave up too fast. Yeah, but Rock's bringing it back, so I'm good. Uh, so it's it's all good. But I, I these leagues got to know, like, dude, you ain't making money the first year. Yeah, like you have to be solvent for three years to 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 get it, and then then you look go for three years, and then take a look and say, is this does this work? Yeah. If it does not, I'm sorry. One thing I was thinking too, and I, I I I don't know if they'll do it. I hope they do. Is I was like it'd be kind of a cool thing because they need to have a superstars, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what if they like every every team like each team got like one player that was paid like you know million, which is over the minimum you know the veteran minimum for NFL, like. Each team has a superstar, a face that you're like, oh, this guy's going. Or like somehow they could lure yeah. a college dude to go to the USFL, like the USFL, like the old USFL did with Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker. Which I think was a really good move. They're Jim only, Kelly. Steve Young. Yeah. Like they've said some of these games are like awesome games. The problem is uh, old Donald talked him into trying to compete. With, with the NFL. You and, can't. Nah, nah, yeah. Don't do that. You're not going to compete with the NFL. Don't compete with the monsters. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. But, yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, anything else going on? No, I mean, still at a standstill with Major League Baseball. Um, like I said, I did bet NBA tonight. Dallas minus one and a half. What time's that game start? I think it started it's either at 7.30, so I think it's on. All right, cool. Um, probably get done with this and, and check it out if it's on TV somewhere. Um, but uh, also, the line did move to two and a half, I saw, later oh, in the Oh, so that's good. Yeah, it's good for us, yeah, that it moved up. Value. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on a five-day win streak. Uh, five bets in a row have hit for me. Pretty good. Yeah. Are you hitting your stride in college basketball? I I, I feel like I am. Okay. Because that, that's the five that I've hit have all been oh. hit college hoops, which two of which were Iowa homer bets. That's but fine. No, still. That's good. Hey, who's your favorites? Or who do you who do you like in the tournament? Oh, yeah. Tournament. Uh, Big 12 tournament this week. Um, I, I actually don't think Kansas is going to win the Big 12 tournament. I don't either. And I'm not being a hater. I'm not either. They just they have not dominated the Big 12 as they have in the past. Yes, they did win a share of the Big 12 title with Baylor. Uh, so I'm not saying they're crap, but I, I just I think somebody else is gonna get hot and win that tournament. I, I think the tournament's gonna be won by somebody like completely random. I'm saying maybe like an Oklahoma State. I actually if I and I probably will look at some futures uh Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, because I've watched them both play, and I'm like... They both play pretty well. They're not great. They're not horrible. They're like a eh, ball team. Like they're, like, they're right in the middle, right? So it's mm-hmm. not like anything stupendous, not great, bad, not, not, not like you watch them and you're just like, oh, superstars. It's not like that. It's just I think they could get hot and make a run. 
But I do think this is going to be I, – I think Kansas and Texas Tech are not winning this thing. It's going to be somebody rando that win, that win the Big 12 tournament. Now, for the NCAA tournament, who you like for that? You know, um, Iowa's been getting hot, but I don't think they're deep enough. I think they could make a run, yeah, but I, not. I don't think they're deep enough to, to actually win it all. I would love that as an Iowa fan. It's crazy when you think about the tournament is actually it's like a six game parlay. Yeah, and I will. Like that's really that's so hard. I will probably fill out multiple brackets, and in one of them, I oh, will Iowa. take Iowa all the way. Sure, um, as a homer, but uh, you know because ESPN you can do it, um, CBS Sports, all those places mm-hmm. you fill them out for free, uh, but. Uh, you know, I think Kansas could get hot and win that thing. I like KU. Um, especially if they don't do so well in the Big 12 tournament. You know, I could see Bill Self um, kind of getting them going. I could see Duke kind of rallying. We talked about that. It would be, yeah. be a rally around the coach. Uh, which we didn't talk about that. But to put it in perspective, okay, yes, Coach K has been at Duke for 42 years. Okay, yes. 42 years. Yes. I will say this, okay, 13 ACC titles. How many does Bill Self have at Kansas? Big 12 titles. I don't know. 20. 20. Big 12's been around like 25, 26 years. He's won 20 titles. Really, really good. So is Coach K overrated? I don't think so. Sound off in the comments about that. I'll th- I'll throw it out. I'll, I think the ACC is a, a better basketball conference. Do you? Yeah, I think so. Just okay. but just having North Carolina in there. Okay. I, I think I think every year if you would take Duke and North Carolina and just play up and down the Big Twelve, and then they 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 would they'd run. be one two. Yeah, and I think that, and I think KU if they played ACC, like say like for the last years. I'm not talking about like this year, like last year's. So I think Kansas is better than Duke. So if you flip like a KU and a Duke for the last 20 years. Yeah, I think Duke would win 20. Yeah, K would win 20. Yeah, I do. Because there's there's some years where you look at the Big 12 and you go, is there anybody else that's even good in this conference? This is actually kind of an odd year for the Big 12 because they might get seven or eight teams in the tournament. Yeah. I mean, they're pretty deep this year. It's it's just weird. Like, I don't know. It's it's kind of – it's kind of – it's like they're they're conf- the Big Twelve has always been like pretty good, but not have another like the, who's like Baylor was like Baylor was last year right, but they've never had like the two where it's like a, a real solid a yeah real two, whereas ACC is like Duke North Carolina watch out yeah like let's go like this is like Syracuse was I mean in there for a long yeah, time yeah like that's really good too so it's one of those things not hating I'm just pointing that out that the accomplishment's awesome yeah. Uh, I would say, I mean, anybody that hates on him not having more than one title, he's got one, right? Who? Uh, Self. Self? No, he's won. He's got one. Two, I think. Because he won Mario's Miracle, and then he won another one, didn't he? I think it's just one. Maybe it is just one. Let us know. I think it's, no, no, I think it's one. It might be just one. Okay. But, all because they were talking about him the other day. Like, if he gets a second ring, like, he's in a different category with coaching. Oh, okay, okay. On six ten, so, um, but yeah, I mean, they knock him for that. But I'm like, come on, yeah, it's really hard. Right? I mean, like literally, the, the the coaches you would take above Bill Self is like, there's a handful. Mm-hmm. I'll take Coach K. I, I'll actually, I'll take. Uh, I mean, I would take uh, freaking uh, Roy Williams. I'll take Roy. Uh, I mean, the the is deal. That it. That might be it. The deal is, man. It it's really hard. Like, because once you How get many games in that, is it six games? Yeah, once you get in that tournament, like, if a team gets hot on a, any given night or if you any given in, day, like, yeah, if you run into the Cinderella, yeah, you you play two games in a weekend, and then you know travel, travel, two more games, travel, travel, two more games, and then that's it. I man. know it is. It's a lot. It's a lot to go on. So, uh, my. The one I like is yeah, who you I, like? I like Kentucky. You've had a bet on them for a while. Yeah, I have. I really like them. I still like them. They're top ten. Um, I think they're really good. And then uh, I like Kentucky. And I'll probably 
look at KU and see how they play in this tournament. I actually think they're going to lose. I don't think they're going to lose the first game. Uh, Big 12 tournament. I don't think they lose first game, maybe second game. And uh, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll watch them and, and see if if I get decent odds on them to win. I'll I'll bet like a I'll bet I'll probably have futures on a Kentucky, uh, a KU, and probably a Duke. And then I'll I'll probably then I'll bet all I'll I'll bet every I'm gonna bet every single game. Yeah, at least a dollar or whatever. So I, I will. Yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'll be all over. It. I'll be all over the tournament. Um, you know, probably do several different brackets. See what happens. Yeah, probably same. So yeah, but all uh, right. I think that's it. I don't yeah. think anything else is going on right now. So there we go. All right, cool. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to comment what you want us to talk about next week. Make sure you can tweet us, Facebook, uh, Instagram. It's all under Midwest Mics. Snapchat. It's Midwest Dash Mics. We we don't have a TikTok. Yeah, we don't have a TikTok. Not yet. We can probably get that. If you want us, let us know on there. But anyway, I'm Gary. This is awesome. This has been Midwest Mics. We'll see you next week.